In this fourth session, I want to introduce you to the passive indicative system of Latin verbs. First, let us review the principal parts of our model verbs. For the first conjugation, parro, parare, parawi, paratum, to prepare. Please repeat. For the second conjugation, our model verb is moneo, I warn. The four parts are moneo, monere, manui, manitum, to warn. For the third conjugation, our model verb is ducho, I lead. The four parts, ducho, ducare, duxi, ductum. Third conjugation, io. Our model verb is capio, I capture. The four parts are capio, capre, capi, captum. And our fourth conjugation model verb, audio, audire, audiwi, auditum, to hear. To form the passive indicative system, you add a different set of endings to the verb stem to form the various tenses. Those endings I've put on the board over here, and they are ar, ris, tour, mur, mini, ntur. Everyone? Remember, the personal endings of a verb function the way pronouns function in the English language. Ar, ris, tour, mur, mini, ntur. This indicates, the R indicates first person singular. Ris, second person singular. Tour, third singular. Moor, first plural. Mini, second plural. Ntur, third plural. These passive endings compare with the active personal endings, which, as you remember, are O or M, S, T, mus, tis, nt. So these endings simply have to be memorized as step one. And then we will use them extensively in the formation of the passive indicative system. Now let's look at that system. Remember, this is first conjugation, second, third, third IO, and fourth conjugation. The passive personal endings are given to you here in dark green, ar, ris, tour, mur, mini, intur. To form the present passive indicative in Latin, you add the passive personal endings to the verb stem. Remember the verb stem for parro? You go to the infinitive and drop off the re, para. There it is, para, all the way through. And then add the passive personal endings. The exception is the first person singular. The O, once again, swallows up the A from the stem. Paror, pararis, paratur, paramor, paramini, parantur. This translates... I am being prepared, yes, or I am prepared. You are being prepared. He is being prepared. We are being prepared. You, plural, are being prepared. They are being prepared, or simply they are prepared. The present passive indicative. Moneo is formed in the same way. You add the passive personal endings to the verb stem. The verb stem is found from the second principal part minus the RE. Moneor, moneris, monetur, monemur, monemini, monentur. I am being warned. Remember, the passive indicates that the Subject is being acted upon. The subject is not doing the acting, but being acted upon. So you translate that normally with the, ver the helping verb being. I am being warned. You are being warned. He is being warned. We are being warned. You, plural, are being warned. 
they are being warned. But notice the E remains throughout the system, the E from the verb stem. The exception here is, is highlighted in, a, in color. You would expect monet eres, you would expect two E's there, but this one E has kind of swallowed up both letters. For the third conjugation, our model verb duho ducare, to lead, it again has some irregularities in its formation. Instead of, remember the vowels I, O, U are our standard vowels for the present system for third conjugation. Well, the I here is converted into an E. So, duchor, ducheres, duchitur, duchimur, duchimini, ducuntur. That is, I am being led, you are being led, he is being led. We, you plural, they are being led. Third io, capior, caperis, capitur, capimur, capimini, capiuntur. I am being captured, you are being captured, he is being captured, we, you plural, they are being captured. That is, the subject is being acted upon. And audi or, audiris, auditur, audimur, audimini, audiuntur. I am being heard. You are being heard. He is being heard. We, you plural, they are being heard. So that's the present passive indicative of our four conjugations. Now let's look at the imperfect passive indicative. Remember, BA is the tense sign for the imperfect. If you see a BA in a verb form, you know that it's an imperfect. <laughs> to that tense sign, you add the passive personal endings. Bar, barris, batur, bamur, bamini, bantur. And you add that whole thing to the stem of the verb. Parabar, parabaris, parabatur. Parabam mur, parabam mini, parabantur. In the translation, I was being prepared. You were being prepared. He was being prepared. We, you plural, they were being prepared. The subject is being acted upon. The imperfect passive indicative of moneo is formed in the same way. You add bar, barras, batur, bamur, bamini, bantur to the stem of the verb, mone. Mone bar, mone barras, mone batur, mone bamur, mone bamini, mone bantur. The E length is, is long here from that stem. I was being warned. You were being warned. He was being warned. We, you plural, they were being warned. The third conjugation in the imperfect is not. Um, unusual or irregular. The E lengthens from the stem, du K, and then you add bar, barras, batur, bamur, bamani, bantur. I was being led, you were being led, he was being led, and so forth. Third conjugation, IO, retains the I throughout the conjugation. The E lengthens, and the imperfect passive endings are added. Capie bar, capie barras, capie batur, capie bamur, capie bamini, capie bantur. How do we translate this? Capie bantur. They were being captured. How about here? Capie batur. He or she or it was being captured. And then the fourth conjugation, audio audire. Same pattern, audie bar, audie barris, audie batur, audie bamur, audie bam mini, audie bantur. How do you translate this? They, the ntur indicates they, were being heard. Okay, so that's the imperfect passive indicative. Now let's move to the future. 
For the first and second conjugations, we follow the same pattern that we had for the active indicative system. We add future endings to the stem. The future passive endings are bor, beres, bitur, bimor, bimini, buntur. You add these endings to the stem para bor, para beres, para bitur, para bimor, para bimini, para buntur. And the translation I will be prepared, you will be prepared. He will be prepared. We, you plural, they will be prepared. The subject is being acted upon. For Moneo, same pattern. You add this unique set of future passive endings to the stem of the verb. Mone bor, mone barras, mone bitur, mone bimor, mone bimini, mone buntur. So, I will be warned, you, he, we, you plural, they will be warned. The future of the third conjugation is tricky, like all third conjugation futures. Instead of adding future endings, a unique set of endings, you change the vowels. But notice, you have the same pattern that we had in the active system. The vowels A and E apply to the future passive indicative. And then you have the same uh, passive personal endings. So that rule holds. A, E, I, O, U. A, E are the vowels for the future of third conjugation verbs. I, O, U for the present with some exceptions such as ducaris. So, ducar, ducaris, ducetur, ducemor, ducemini, ducentur. I will be led, you will be led, he will be led, we, you plural, they will be led. The subject is being acted upon. The third conjugation, io, is similar. Capiar, capieras, capietur, capiemor, capiemini, capientur. Notice A and E. These vowels are present in the future here. And then the passive personal endings. I will be captured. You will be captured. He will be captured. We, you plural, they will be captured. And for the third Fourth conjugation, audiar, audieras, audietur, audiemur, audiemini, audientur. Notice again, A and E, the vowels are present in the future here. And then the passive personal endings, the translation, I will be heard, you will be heard, he will be heard, we will be heard, you plural, will be heard, they will be heard. Okay, so the future tense is, is the difficult one. It's the one that experiences, experiences these vowel changes. Once we get past the future, we have smooth sailing again. If you, once you learn the system for how this is formed, the perfect passive indicative is what we want to look at now. The perfect passive indicative. How is it formed? The perfect passive indicative is formed with two components. The present conjugation of sum and the fourth principal part of the verb. Paratus, sum. Here's, here's the present uh, conjugation of sum. We learned this in our first session. Sum es est, sumus estis sunt. That is, if it stands alone, this would translate, I am, you are, he is, we are, you are, they are. You combine the present conjugation of sum plus the fourth principal part, and you have the perfect passive indicative. How do you know the fourth principal part? You have it memorized, because when you learned the verb, you memorized the four principal parts. 
paratus sum, paratus est, paratus est, parati sumus, parati estis, parati sunt. Translates, remember, perfect passive indicative. I have been prepared, you have been prepared, he has been prepared, we were prepared or have been prepared, you plural, they were prepared or have been prepared. The subject is acted upon. Notice that this um, verb form here, this participle, is converted into the plural for the three plural forms. But the formation is straightforward if you know your principal parts here. Notice for the second conjugation verb, moneo, monere, here we have the fourth principal part, which we learned as monitum, U-M, but some textbooks would introduce it as monitus. The difference is U-S would be a masculine singular ending, U-M would be a neuter singular ending, but it's really the same entity, namely the perfect passive participle. So, manitus sum, manitus est, manitus est, maniti sumus, maniti estis, maniti sunt, translates, I have been warned, you have been warned, he has been warned, we, you plural, they have been warned. The pattern is the same for the third conjugation. Add the present conjugation of sum to, or not, you don't add it, but you combine it with the fourth principal part, ductus, or ductum as we learned. Ductus sum, ductus est, ductus est, that is, I was led, or it can be translated have been led, you, he, we, you plural, they have been led. Perfect passive indicative. Third conjugation, io, same pattern. Fourth principal part plus the present of sum. I have been captured, you have been captured, he has been captured. We, you plural, they have been captured. The subject is acted upon in the past time period. And fourth conjugation, auditus, sum, I have been heard, you have been heard, he has been heard, and so forth. So, now you are beginning to understand why these principal parts are so important. You will save yourself so much work if you simply learn them up front when you learn the verb because those principal parts are the key to unlocking the rest of the verbal system. The pluperfect passive indicative is formed in a way very similar to the perfect passive indicative, but this time, instead of the present conjugation of sum, you add the imperfect of sum. Remember from our first session, Eram, eras, erat, eramus, eratus, errant. That's the imperfect of sum. When that is combined with the fourth principal part, you have the pluperfect passive indicative. In the translation, I had been prepared, you had been prepared, he had been prepared. Remember, you always need the auxiliary verb had for the pluperfect tense, whether active or passive. So how do we translate parati errant? Pluperfect passive indicative. They had been prepared. Notice for the singular persons, it's it's a singular form here, which you might not be able to identify at this point, but once we learn the noun system, you'll understand that the U.S. here is singular, the I is plural. The pluperfect passive indicative of a second conjugation verb follows the same pattern, fourth principal part plus the imperfect of sum. Monitus erram, how do we translate that? I had been 
warned. How about this one? Monitus errat. He or she or it had been warned. How about moniti errant? They had been warned. Pluperfect passive indicative. Third conjugation follows the same pattern. There's no tricks to it. Simply fourth principal part plus the imperfect of sum. I had been led. You had been led. He had been led. We, you plural, they had been led. And the third io is the same. The fourth conjugation is the same. So finally, let's move down to the future perfect passive indicative. That sounds like a lot, but it's simply formed by combining the future of sum, which is ero, eris, erit, erimus, eritus, erunt, plus the fourth principal part, paratus ero. And it translates, I shall have been prepared. How about parati erunt? How do we translate that? They will have been prepared. And the formation for the rest of the system is the same. Fourth principal part plus the future of sum. And you form the future perfect passive indicative. So in a short period of time we have covered the active indicative system and the passive indicative system. There are a few more extraneous verb forms that I want to help you identify and be able to form, but in our next session we will introduce the Latin noun system.